From our Center for the Arts studio, this is Good Afternoon Ashland. I'm Evan Laux. And I'm Sean Rapuyan. Thanks for tuning in. Jamar Tisby, author of The Color of Compromise and How to Fight Racism, recently visited Ashland University for a two-day lecture event. Hosted by several organizations on campus, including the Office of Diversity of Inclusion, the Office of Christian Ministry, the Religion Department, and the Honors Program, Tisby gave a lecture entitled The Color of Compromise on March 24th and a sermon entitled Fierce Urgency of Now on March 25th. Along with being an author, Tisby is also the president of The Witness, a black Christian collaborative and co-host of the Pass the Mic podcast. AU is getting an upgrade on the way students navigate advising and registering for classes. Elucian Self Service will be replacing WebAdvisor, the service students previously used for registering for classes, advising, and paying tuition, among other uses. This change was announced by AU on February 4th and will officially begin being used for registration for this coming fall semester. Elucian can be found at selfservice.ashland.edu. This past February, students in Ashland University's Sports Management Program got the opportunity to put their classroom skills to use by volunteering at Super Bowl 55 in Tampa Bay, Florida. Students were able to gain professional experience with AU's TV20's Evan Lauchs and had the chance to sit down with some of the students who attended the event and discuss their experience. Because of the COVID-19 pandemic, many students are finding it difficult to find those enriching experiences outside of the classroom. However, 11 lucky students from the Ashland University Sports Management Department found just that when they were given the opportunity to travel down to Tampa, Florida in early February to volunteer at the NFL Super Bowl Fan Experience. So that was really nice being able to see how sports can connect to people um, in several ways past just participation and just seeing the passion and being able to just have fun because at the end of the day, that's what sports is all about. Students volunteered for 30 hours over two days, assisting with fan drills such as the 40-yard dash, QB scramble, two-minute drill, field goal contest, and other popular attractions. So one of the biggest things that I know me and some of the other people that went on the trip is we wanted to make connections and network. Um, coming back from the trip, I had made at least five connections on LinkedIn. Sports simply will not run if people don't have the love to help, help the sports. Although this is the first time AU Sports Management Department has been to a Super Bowl, students frequently volunteered their time at other sporting events, including the Cleveland Cavaliers, Cleveland Monsters, and the Akron Rubber Ducks. So the biggest experience that I would take from this is you try to be consistent in everything that you do. So we just kind of helped out, you know, just trying to make the experience that much better for especially younger kids and, and the parents themselves. For AU TV 20, Evan Laux. For more information about Ashland University's sports management program, you can visit the sports management page at ashland.edu or by email at sports-mgt at ashland.edu. Coming up, we will hear from reporter Shante Rutherford about a special guest who came to work with Ashland University's Symphonic Band. And a bit later, we will head over to Lydia Bice to hear about everything Ashland sports, including an update on the women's golf season. Stay tuned, you're watching Good Afternoon Ashland. From our Center for the Arts studio, this is your AUTV 20 sports break. It's more than a college TV station. It's award-winning, student-made content. It's the latest news in sports. It's talking to campus. It's reaching out into the community. It's real-world experience. It's AUTV 20. Point nine WRDL is Ashland University's own award-winning student-run radio station covering music, news, sports, and more. From early birds work to individual DJ shifts, WRDL gives students the opportunity to not only hone their skills to become tomorrow's radio professionals today, but also serve their campus and community and play today's hits at the same time. More music, more you. 88.9 WRDL. Welcome back to Good Afternoon Ashland. 
Ashland University's Coburn Art Gallery is currently hosting its student art and design exhibition. Since opening on March 4th, students who have taken any visual art classes within the past 12 months can enter their pieces and have them displayed. While having the opportunity to get professional feedback, Monterey prizes were given out to students during its opening, with categories such as Best in Show, Honorable Mentions, Bernini Award, Dean's Award, and Wink Alumni Award. The exhibit offers up to $950 for the winners. The exhibit is free and open to the public with hours of 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Friday and noon to 4 p.m. on the weekends. The Ashland University Theater Department is streaming their current stage production of Theory of Relativity. Under the direction of Dr. Teresa Durbin Ames, this unconventional musical song cycle is inspired by Einstein's famous theories, the many numbers of pi, and the real-life experiences of college students and how the world changes. The streaming of the production is available until May 1st. Tickets are $5 and will be valid for a 48-hour viewing period. The link for viewing can be found on the Ashland University website. The Ashland University Symphonic Band recently performed their first concert of the semester, Something Old, Something New, Something bor Borrowed, and Something Blue. Prior to the performance, the students had the chance to work on certain pieces with a special guest conductor from The Ohio State University. AUTV 20's Shante Rutherford has the story. The Ashland University Symphonic Band has been working hard towards their first concert of the semester. While traversing through various pieces spanning decades of music, a special guest came in to give them a different point of view. Dr. Russell Mickelson, director of university bands at The Ohio State University, came to AU on March 15th and for two hours, he worked with the students on technique, precision, and creativity. Well, Professor Joseph Lewis, the director of bands here, uh, played in my groups when uh, I was early in my time at Ohio State. And uh, he asked me to come up and work with his band and uh, I was thrilled to be able to do it. With all the music that the students were working on, Dr. Mickelson only focused on two in particular, Second Suite by Gustav Holtz and Rest by Frank Tickelli. Second Suite in F major, along with its first part in E flat, is a staple in band repertoire. For Tekeli's Rest, more commonly known as Let There Be Rest, Mickelson had this choral piece commissioned in memory of his father. Mr. Joseph Lewis Jr., director of bands here at Ashland, worked with him during his undergrad years at OSU. Lewis, as he watched his former educator work with his students, felt a sense of excitement. It was kind of like going back in time a little bit when I was at Ohio State watching him rehearse. Um, he's a, a brilliant musician and a brilliant conductor. Um, and just uh, watching him rehearse was, was really fantastic. Uh, that was the first time I'd had the chance to sit and listen to the band play and listen to them uh, be rehearsed, listen to them in rehearsal. And uh, it, it was really a proud moment because I realized just how good this band is. As the group moves on to their next set of music, the advice that Dr. Mickelson gave them will carry on into their next performance and more to come. For AETV 20, I'm Shantae Rutherford. For those interested in attending the Symphonic Band's next concert on April 25th, there will be limited tickets for in-person seating, which can be reserved in advance at the AU Bookstore. Those interested can also watch a live stream of the concert on the Ashland University Band's Facebook page, where more information about the concert can be found as well. We're going to take a break, but when we come back, sports anchor Lydia Bice will fill us in on the sports happening around Ashland University. Before that, we'll go back to field reporter Elena Ross for Alumni Access, where she recently sat down with JDM alumni Waylon O'Donnell to discuss his time in the Department of Journalism and Digital Media and what he's been doing beyond graduation. You're watching Good Afternoon, Ashley. Hi, and thank you so much for joining me. And thank you for having me, Miss Elena. Thank you so much. So could you tell me when was the last time that you set foot in JDM as a student? As a student? Uh, the last time I set foot in the JDM department as a student was in December of 2018. Uh, I was, the, I mean, I graduated that December. I, that was a goal of mine throughout college was to graduate in the fall as opposed to the spring because I have uh, a lack of like towards graduation ceremonies and I wanted it to be quick. And um, uh, that was the last time, yeah, I set foot in, in a JDM department. 
Cool. Including so, ours. So you've had a good portion of time to kind of reflect on your college career. So um, could you tell us a little bit about your experience in JDM? Sure. So originally, I was not a, a JDMer. I was, when I started out in Ashland, I was in the theater department. I switched over to the JDM department after a year because of my interest in broadcasting. Uh, and let me tell you, the, uh, the faculty, they know their stuff. They have an all-star lineup there that gives you hands-on experience. They work with you as an individual. They work with your strengths and they put you out of your comfort zone so you can grow at the maximum uh, proficiency that you can grow. And because of that, it, it really prepares you for the world to come. Uh, and it's, it's, it, it's a marvelous department. I look back very fondly on all of my years and all of my experiences with everyone in the JDM department. Um, what are some skill sets that you learned during your time in JDM that you now use in your, in your job? Uh, interviewing is, is one. And I mean, uh, be, it, the interviewing skill set is, is very important, especially if you're on radio, if you're in written journalism, uh, if you're doing sports, you got to know how to talk to somebody else and get the information you want to get. And uh, I, I thank the JDM department for teaching me that. Also, uh, confidence. It, uh, the re repetition gives you a lot of, of just muster going into the, into the field. And uh, it, they also teach you how to network. Social media is a huge thing right now. And so networking has been easier than ever before, thanks to the digitalized world. And so they teach you how to utilize that because all the students that you see around you when you're, when you're in class and when you're uh, uh, you know, on campus, that's a potential contact for you in the future, whether that's in your department or someone else's department. And people tend to lean on each other more so than not. And so use that to your advantage and uh, network with your friends, acquaintances, maybe people you didn't necessarily get along with because we're all about to face the real world. And uh, it's, 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 it's not easy, but uh, it's rewarding. Awesome. And then my final question is kind of a little selfish on my part because I am a senior, but what advice do you have for people like me as we go from like, you know, 16 plus years of schooling into being an adult? <laughs> you, you nailed it on the head. You, you've been going to school for 16 plus years, since kindergarten, since preschool. And that hasn't been your choice. That is something, you know, and you're grinded in your high school years, your junior high years, you gotta go to college. You gotta get a degree, you know, if you wanna find a good job. Now, celebrate your graduation is my first advice. Take time to reflect on what you've accomplished because that's a big deal. But after that minuscule, time of celebration put your nose to the grinder and start running i mean this isn't a playground this isn't recess uh you know you've got to network you got to get yourself out of your comfort zone and utilize your education because you're lucky enough to have one and try my biggest advice is if you're looking for something and you don't know what to do or you're you don't know which way to go find a way to make a difference in the community you love, whether that's your hometown or where you want to move, find a way to make a difference and you'll meet people and who see your genuine desire to change the world, even on a minuscule level. And that'll just take you so many places and give a very fulfilling purpose to you as an individual and you'll learn from it. And it's just a, it's small steps will make a big difference in the end. Awesome. Well, is there anything else that you would like to add? No, I just really appreciate you having me. And I just, I'm honored to be a part of it. And JDM for life, that is me. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much. <laughs> You're welcome. Thanks, Elena. I appreciate it. Hello, and welcome to Good Afternoon Ashland Sports Update. I'm Lydia Bice. Thanks for tuning in. Ashland University's men's and women's tennis home matches scheduled for March 26th against Purdue Northwest have been postponed due to COVID-19 protocols in the Great Lakes Intercollegiate Athletic Conference. A potential makeup date and time 
will be announced in the near future. The next ske scheduled matches for the Eagle men, who are 3 and 4 overall, and the women, who are 2 and 3 overall, are on March 27th at noon at home versus Davenport, April 2nd at Michigan Tech, and April 3rd at Lake Superior State. Director of Athletics Al King has announced the hiring of Alec Mueller as Ashland University's new eSports head coach. Mueller replaces the program's first coach, Josh Buchanan, who left the university earlier in the semester to pursue another opportunity. Mueller is a 2020 graduate of Ashland University and competed on the AU eSports team as one of its inaugural players as part of the Fortnite team. Ashland University's women's golf team played the second and final day of the Findlay Spring Invitational on Tuesday, March 23rd at the University Club of Kentucky. Leading the way for the Eagles in the 54-hole event was senior Sophie Hemleben, who tied for 48th place individually. I sat down with Sophie and women's golf coach Eugene Graybick for an update on their spring 2021 season. As many of us know, the COVID-19 pandemic has changed a lot about our world. For the Ashland University women's golf team, they lost two seasons of opportunity in the spring and fall of 2020. However, they are back in action and ready for a successful season here in the spring of 2021. When asked what he is looking forward to most about the upcoming season, Coach Gene Graybick says competition since his girls have not been able to compete in about a year. You know, I see a lot of girls that have come to me, three freshmen that have never played. Again, they haven't played for a year in competition. So mentally just getting them to think how to be competitive, how to go out and compete and play to a new level, just exceeding their expectations. So that's what, as a coach, you know, the expression, I have to coach them up and, and for them to believe in themselves and believe in their abilities. Senior women's golfer Sophie Hemleben says that the season is much different due to COVID-19 concerns, but she is looking forward to guiding the younger girls through these challenges. Obviously with COVID, we have to wear masks and everything when, when, when we're in the hotel, but I'm really excited for our older members to guide our younger members that we have on the team. Ashland Women's Golf has been working on many aspects of their game in preparation for spring tournaments, but Sophie in particular says that she has been focusing on her short game. Personally, I'm working on my short game. We just played a course that really enhanced how weak we are in our short game. So we're all working on that. But I think just mentally on the course, we're all working on staying more positive and playing in the moment rather than thinking ahead. For AUTV 20, I'm Lydia Bice. The women's golf team will look to continue their season on April 4th and 5th at the NC4K Classic in Gahanna, Ohio, and April 17th and 18th at the 2021 GLIAC Championships in Augusta, Michigan. In national sports news, the NCAA has hired an outside law firm to review gender equity issues in its athletic championships after numerous complaints pointed out inequities in facilities and amenities between the men's and women's basketball tournaments. According to a statement issued by NCAA President Mark Emmert, the organization has hired Kaplan Hecker and Fink LLP to evaluate their practices and policies and provide recommendations on steps that the NCAA can take to get better. The firm says that one of its specialties is employment and discrimination matters, including Title IX and gender equity cases. The Ashland University swim and dive team recently finished their final season competing in the GLIAC Conference with many notable accomplishments throughout the season. AUTV20's own Ben Volker recently went and discussed the season with several of the athletes and their coaches. Following one final appearance at the GLIAC Championship meet, the Ashland swim and dive team has begun their off-season training. The goal for this off-season is simple, get stronger and have fun. Off season is an interesting topic because some coaches want to keep everybody in the exact same shape, push them hard, get them ready for a tough summer, but that's not my, my focus. My focus is let's build some strength in the weight room, 
let's keep our feel of the water and let's have fun, okay? Due to COVID, the swim team was smaller than it was in previous years due to many swimmers choosing to redshirt this past season. Those who did swim, however, did very well. I'm very happy with how we did. Last year we had 52 PRs, this year we had 28. And I'm ecstatic that we were able to have that many. Um, very happy with how they did individually and as a team. I am so excited to have everybody back next year. Um, we're going to be bringing in some new people too. And I'm just really excited to have that full team atmosphere again where the entire pool is full. We're, we're able to do these tough sets and cheer each other on. The team is set to transition from the GLIAC to the Great Midwest Athletic Conference, or GMAC for short. With this change comes lofty goals and high expectations to succeed right away. Moving into the GMAC is going to be a very big change for us. Uh, we're going to be going into a conference where right away we're going to have a nice battle for the championship, and I think we've got a good shot at it. It's going to take a lot of teamwork, it's going to take a lot of hard work, but I think it's within our grasp. For AUTV 20, I'm Ben Volker. This has been your Good Afternoon Ashland Sports Update. I'm Lydia Bice. Thanks for watching. That's it for this edition of Good Afternoon Ashland. We hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to follow us across social media at AUTV20. And make sure to tune in to the Early Birds Word weekday mornings from 7 to 9 on 88.9 WRDL. Also, pick up a copy of the student newspaper, The Collegian, or visit them online at au-live.com. Thanks to our crew and everyone behind the scenes here at AUTV20. I'm Sean Rapuyan. And I'm Evan Laux. Thanks for watching.